Let's build the perfect language. Let's do it. Right now. Pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and abandon all of these flaws, all of these inconsistencies. No miscommunications, no disagreements, just thoughts conveyed perfectly into words. It's 1879 and we're German Catholic priest Johann Martin Schleyer. We've decided to create the language that's going to unite the world in mutual communication. We take a bunch of English words, warp them beyond recognition in the name of simplifying the phonology, which to us, a German really just means making them easy for a German to pronounce. This is the name of our new language, Volapük. Cool. Arguably even more important than vocabulary is grammar. It's very important not to mess this part up, and remember we're constructing the perfect language here. So we copy the grammar almost entirely from Latin, which, as any high school Latin student will tell you, is about the worst possible choice if you want people to actually learn your grammar. You see, our view of an ideal language is clouded by our experience as a Catholic priest and by the success of Latin during the Roman Empire, where Latin was the lingua franca of Europe, not because it was easy to learn, but because people really had no other choice. Okay, so maybe we need to take a different approach. It's 1887 and we're Polish ophthalmologist L.L. Zamenhof. We see that Schleyer has got it the wrong way around. He's taken the grammar from a language that Europeans are familiar with the vocab of and taken the vocab from a modern language with friendlier grammar to Europeans. Instead, we've got to take the vocabulary from Romance languages, which of course everybody knows, and for the grammar, boil down the grammar and syntax of Slavic languages. You know, the default grammar. Cynicism aside, this language, Esperanto, is wildly successful. There are a couple of quirks in the grammar that get a little controversial, but Esperanto is arguably the most successful artificially constructed global auxiliary language until it isn't. History is not kind to dreamers like Zamenhof, and luckily everyone learnt their lesson about assuming that Romance languages are ideal. So nobody ever tried to copy Zamenhof or Schleyer ever again. It's 1978 and we're Canadian linguist Starren Fetzi. And we're going to end all of this copying stuff from Latin business by doing the exact same thing with our language Kotaba, but instead of taking words from our favourite language, we'll make up words from nothing. But the grammar still has to come from somewhere, and that somewhere is a weird mix of European agglutinative features that look like Conlanger's wet dream. So at least it appeals to somebody. It's about time we ask the question, what features would make a language perfect? English speakers would probably point to things like a spelling system that perfectly represents speech character for character, which could only exist in a language without regional accents and without diversity. We could point to grammatical inconsistencies and exceptions, ignoring the fact that these exceptions developed for a reason and give us extra context and emphasis to important regularly used words. We could make a language without homonyms, which would either have a far too complex phonology, that's its sounds and pronunciation rules, or it would have to have words that are far too long. Which begs the question, what is a phonology that's far too complex? Many English speakers would look at the tones of Sinitic languages and say that's far too complicated, but those Mandarin speakers could just as well turn around and point out how English's dozens of vowels and diverse selection of consonants is too complicated. At the end of the day, these language features are a balancing act of complexity versus learnability, of simplicity versus utility. And the languages that meet that balance are already here. Languages naturally evolve to meet the needs of their people and to reflect their cultural values. And any attempt at rewriting the natural course of language development is an attempt to erase that cultural history and natural balance that we already have. And subconsciously, we know this. It's the biggest glaring reason why none of these constructed languages ever work out. 
because in the face of change and cultural erasure, we all know it's much nicer to sit back, relax, and appreciate the beautiful world of language in front of us. the last albino rhino gyno on the planet. Well, I'm the only albino rhino gyno I know. Should we get some wine? 